My name is Simona Millam and I'm your Microsoft Office trainer and this is a very interesting course for me because Microsoft Teams is one of the newer additions to Office 365 which Microsoft describes as a chat-based workspace or a collaboration hub. But I hate it when people try and tell me about a product before I've even seen it. So I'm going to jump straight into a quick tour of Microsoft Teams. Obviously, we'll do the detail in subsequent nuggets. And then we will ponder how it fits into the rest of the Microsoft offerings. So a chat based workspace, they say. Well, look at the left hand side. The first thing you do is you structure your environment into these different teams and a team is a group of people. So you can see I'm a member of four different teams here. And then within each team, you have different channels, which are the topics. And then within each channel, that's where you have your conversations. And you'll see that the conversations are threaded. So I can reply to a conversation or start a brand new conversation down the bottom here. You'll see that the gray shaded entries are what I've typed and all of the white entries are other people's input. If somebody were to reply to something or to at mention me, then I do get a notification that pops up at the bottom right hand corner there and these little red notifications to make sure I don't miss anything. Up at the very top of the left hand corner there, that's my activity. So that summarises all of my activity. It could be within a particular channel. It could be anybody that's at mentioned me or replied to the different conversations that I've been participating in. Now, when I start a conversation in a channel, it's available to everybody in that team. But alternatively, I could start a chat. So over on the left hand side at the top here, I can have a chat either one to one or one to many. So have a look at this example here. I'm having a chat with two other participants and I can even if I want to initiate a voice call or a video call from that chat as well at the top right hand corner here. And rather nice, I can also chat with bots. <laughs> so T bot here is the built in bot that allows me to ask questions. So he is very much the help facility of Microsoft Teams. Now, Microsoft Teams will also keep track of our meetings for us. So again, using the icons on the left hand side here, and this will show me everything from my Outlook calendar, and it will even allow me to join a Skype meeting from within Microsoft Teams. But you can also use Teams to run your team meetings. So you can see down the bottom here, I can schedule a meeting using the Teams functionality rather than Skype for Business. So you can use a mixture of the two if you need to. But what I really love, probably my favorite thing about Microsoft Teams is the flexibility you've got when you start working with the different tabs. So I'm back in the planning channel. You can see I've got the conversations tab there. Well, we can share files, as you might imagine, within Teams. We can even have a wiki or a shared OneNote notebook. And we can add all sorts of other tabs. There's loads that we can add. So for example, I could embed a Power BI report, for example, I can embed videos, I can have an Excel spreadsheet or a PowerPoint presentation, really, really flexible as to how we can further extend the information available in our Teams environment. Wow, I think a collaboration hub or a chat based workspace probably is a fair description of Teams. But where does this product fit in with Office 365? Now, as we will see, Microsoft Teams isn't available as a standalone product because it has too many dependencies. You could almost say that it's not really actually a product in its own right. It's just a, a presentation layer that integrates other Office 365 functionality. For example, the chat and meetings functionality in Teams is based on Skype for Business online services, but it doesn't use the Skype for Business client. Also, as we will see when we progress through this course, files shared in Teams get stored in SharePoint or OneDrive. And Office 365 Groups is the Office 365 service used to manage the membership of Teams. And so every team you make also creates an exchange mailbox and a SharePoint site. So Teams really is built on all of these familiar Office 365 services. Well, that's all well and good, but I'm sure you're thinking, well, when do I use what? There seems to be quite a lot of overlap of functionality here. So let's tackle these one at a time. So firstly, when do I use Office 365 Groups and when do I use Teams? Well, actually, it's not an either or because Teams is built on Office 365 Groups. Groups is the underlying service that is used to manage the membership of Microsoft Teams. And similarly, it's not a case of, is it SharePoint or Microsoft Teams? Again, Teams builds on the platform that is SharePoint and all of the files that you share in a channel, for example, get stored automatically in the SharePoint site that gets created associated with each team that you create. 
A little bit more tricky though is when do I use Yammer and when do I use Teams? Now, the way I tend to think of this, Yammer is very good for large organisations where you don't know exactly who it is that might know the answer to your question. Whereas I think Teams is great for a known group of people that you work closely with. But there is an overlap, I have to say, and I would suggest you think very carefully about whether it's sensible to use both Yammer and Teams in your organisation. What about users that say, well, when should I use an Outlook email and when should I use Microsoft Teams? Well, again, there is an overlap. With a bit of luck, Teams will reduce the volume of email in your inboxes. I don't think we'll ever get rid of email altogether. It's a traditional and familiar method of communicating, but Teams should reduce the volume of email that we use. And when do I use Skype for business and when do I use Microsoft Teams? This is another tricky one, I think, because there is an overlap of functionality. But don't forget that Skype for business provides that enterprise telephony. Maybe as Office 365 evolves, we'll start to see better separation of these capabilities. And that leads me on to my very next slide, because Office is a living thing. It's continually evolving. So don't be surprised if your Teams environment has a couple of additional options that you don't see in the videos in this course. And finally, how do you get Microsoft Teams? Well, it's not available standalone, so it will just be part of your Office 365 subscription, and you would need to refer to your particular licensing agreement for more details. Well, I hope that has whetted your appetite for learning more about Microsoft Teams. Let's get started.